Howdy folks, I'm Animated Antimony, annoying, antagonizing, ancillary ants. I'm Amber. And here are more ancillary ants for us to antagonize. Amber, why are they ancillary? I mean, they're not like the main ants, they're kind of like supporting ants, so they're ancillary to the, to the group of ants. I see. So, are they like the guard ants is what you're saying? I don't all know all the ins and outs of the way the ant order works. I just know that they're they're kind of on the sidelines supporting. They're not like the the big like top ants. The ant order. All right, folks, let's get started. All right, folks, our first letter is titled "Am I a jerk?" I was accidentally seen naked by a friend who watches our baby. I'm a 40-year-old male, and I was out for a jog, and then I came home to shower. It sometimes takes me a little longer to get ready in the morning, as I don't have a set time to be at work. On this particular morning, I decided to take my time to get ready. This meant that I was getting out of the shower while the babysitter was here. For some background, the babysitter is an actual adult friend of ours. Wanted to make sure that the creeps don't hijack this post. I will go ahead and I will get some of the questions that will be posted out of the way. Yes, she's attractive. She is one of those single type women who can't seem to find a reason for why she's single. I think it's because of something that we don't know. But that's a story for another time period. Also, I have no interest in cheating on my wife with this friend in any ways. Back to the story. Since I had just gotten out of the shower, I wrapped a towel around myself and I went to spend some quality time with the baby. We were laying on the floor and my kid was enjoying some tummy time and playing. We are really working on trying to crawl and move so our kid can stay on track developmentally. The babysitter walks into the room, has a seat on the floor, and starts playing with the baby as well. While rolling on the floor and playing with the baby, my towel comes open and my junk is exposed for the world to see. I casually cover myself back up and I continue to play with the baby. The friend slash babysitter immediately jumps up, starts grabbing her stuff, and then rushes towards the door. I start asking her what's going on, are you okay, is something the matter, and she says I can't believe you just did that. What's wrong with you? You're sick. And on and on and on. I'm like, is this because you saw me partially slash fully naked? And she said yes, and slams the door on her way out. While calling to work to reschedule the meeting and trying to get a hold of the babysitter, I get a frantic call from my significant other, a 37-year-old female, asking what I did to the babysitter slash friend. I said nothing really. My towel just happened to fall off while I was playing with the baby. She goes off and telling me that I'm the jerk for doing this and that I should have put some clothes on and I shouldn't have been wearing a towel and so on and so forth. I'm like, sure, cool, whatever. But... You guys are making a big deal out of nothing. We're all adults in this situation, and we've all seen plenty of naked bodies. I didn't make any moves. I wasn't trying to suggest anything, and I definitely wasn't trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Friends and family have come down on both sides of the issue. So, Internet, am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? Yeah, I... Innocent accident or no? I think OP is being the jerk here, and uh, I don't buy that it was all an innocent accident. I understand, like, if you're really close friends with someone, you might be okay walking around the house in the towel, but it sounds like they have more of a... not a super close relationship, and it just... It gives me very creepy vibes. Okay, so my question is this. OP is friends with this person and his towel pops open, right? And instead of doing what I think most people would have done and just immediately started apologizing and saying, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, let me go get clothes on. I did not mean for that to happen. He just kind of shrugs it off and is like, it's no big deal. Yeah, well, that's the thing. is like just his casual attitude this whole time makes me really like, it makes it feel deliberate and or like he has very very different uh morals than the rest of us so i don't know i mean i would love to believe him when he says that he's not attracted to this person and not trying to make any moves but i kind of feel like he may have wrote this post explicitly to reassure his wife that mm -hmm. look sure there's nothing that's going on here everything's kosher everything's great and i'm not trying to be gross unfortunately it just really seems way too coincidental it's like mm -hmm. it, it, it just doesn't see that doesn't pass the sniff test well and even if we wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt the moment he realized that she was uncomfortable he should have completely changed his actions like he shouldn't be dismissing her and his wife and be like oh you two are freaking out over nothing because 
if you make someone uncomfortable, even if it's not intentional, that's still on you. Yeah, well, and then also here, he at the end there, he's like blowing off his wife mm -hmm. too, right? He's blowing everyone off. He's only caring about what how he feels. And he's like, this isn't a big deal. People have seen other people naked all the time. I don't understand why she's freaking out about this. Like she's just acting irrationally. Well, and the thing is, like, you never know what kind of bad experiences someone has yeah. or what kind of scary things they've read about. Like, this may very well have been, like, the start of a horror movie in her mind, mm -hmm. you know? And again, even if he didn't intend for it to be that way, he has to recognize that his intentions do not dictate her internal responses, mm -hmm. and he has to be cognizant of that. Yeah. And, I mean, I think the wife has probably the best point instead of going downstairs and playing with the baby in a towel mm -hmm. when you know somebody is going to be over yeah then that that just kind of sets yourself up for something to happen right well exactly and that part again like it's not like they're super close friends or something who are used to seeing each other naked you know it's a different sort of relationship and so why wasn't he dressed in the first place yeah she may have felt very uncomfortable to begin with when mm -hmm. he came into the room in only a towel. And then it pops open and he's just like, oh, casually closing this up. Ah, no big deal here. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. I would hate to be cynical here, but I'm pretty cynical mm -hmm. here. Let me know what you folks think, though. So, anyhow, take care and good luck. And Night Sister Murren87 says, You're the jerk. You don't roll around naked on the floor in a towel in front of the babysitter. When she got there, you should have excused yourself and got dressed, if not before. How would you feel if your employer waved his private parts around in your work area? Which is what you've just done to her. You had better get looking for a new babysitter. And I mean, I think that's a great point, too, is that it's very unprofessional. And even though babysitting isn't necessarily always very formal, it's still employment. Yeah. And Naya Sells 11 says, I feel bad for the ex-babysitter, but I feel awful for his partner. She has such a huge problem. And OP replies, please explain. <laughs> and Mediocre Asparagus 25 says, you're the jerk. You definitely should have apologized immediately after the incident and gotten dressed. You also sound like you're leaving things out. You knew the babysitter was coming. You should have already been clothed. It is a big deal if she feels like it is. Is it really that hard to just say sorry instead of blaming the babysitter for your carelessness? And OP replies, I'm not blaming the babysitter, and I did apologize. I just think it was an overreaction. And S Boy Tashi says, it's not an overreaction. You overstepped normal human boundaries. Nobody wants to see your junk, especially the babysitter. The fact that you kept playing afterwards makes you a jerk. And OP replies, that's a valid view, and I thank you for not assuming the worst. They didn't say they didn't assume <laughs> the worst, though. And Luxaville says, you're the jerk. Why are you wearing only a towel around the babysitter? Why are you rolling around on the floor with just a towel on with the babysitter around? Why would you think a woman you just flashed wants to stay and would not be offended by that, rather than you putting on some pants to start with? And what's with all this period? This is the most suspicious I'm not trying to get with the babysitter alibi post I've ever seen. And edit a ad, you have an awful lot of posts in adult content subreddits, my guy. And edit to deleting your comments won't absolve you of guilt. <laughs> hmm, seems like someone may have been trying to play out a fantasy. And OP replies, again, not interested in the babysitter and definitely not minimizing feelings, but I would think knowing someone for years would garner some leeway. And Luxaville says, yeah, sure, dude, tell that to your dead bedroom, passport bros, and adult content subreddit posts. Oh, and your affair subreddit posts. And OP replies, everyone has a past that they can learn from. You should also use past experiences to help others grow. But hey, what better indicators of future behavior than past Reddit posts? Well, folks, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm thoroughly convinced now that OP had no ill intentions <laughs> with the babysitter whatsoever. I am sold on this. <laughs> yeah, no, nothing to see here. <laughs> nothing to see at all, folks. Let's let's move along. Let's move along before more <laughs> come out. Speaking of inappropriate posts, our next post is titled, "Will I was I the jerk for not impregnating my sister-in-law?" 
I will keep this as short as possible. I'm a 35 year old male married to my wife, a 31 year old five years ago, and we've lived together for eight years. We had our first child four years ago and a second child a year ago, both boys. Her sister, 33, has been married for seven years and in that time has had one child, a boy. After the birth of her child, her husband was in an accident and can no longer produce another child. My sister-in-law and her husband approached my wife to see if I would be interested in donating in order for my sister-in-law to give birth to one more child. My wife thought that this was a great idea and made the decision for me to proceed with the process without consulting me. I was against it at first, but I came around to the point where I was willing to speak with a fertility doctor, but I let them know that I was not saying yes at this point, as the whole idea seemed weird as my kids was essentially be half siblings to this new child. Well, after the meeting with the doctor, it became very clear that this was not an option for my sister-in-law, and she does not work, and her husband only makes around 50 grand a year. They could not afford the procedure. They asked my wife and I to help offset the cost, but that was not an option that I was willing to explore as I only make about $85,000 a year and we recently purchased a new house and are trying to invest in college funds, etc. It was a hard no for me and my wife was okay with that, but I think that she would have found a way to get them some, if not all of the money. I told her that she could put that decision on me and she did exactly that. Well, my sister-in-law is upset. She called me selfish, and it turns out that my sister-in-law knew that we had quite a bit of money set aside in the kids' college fund, as before the kids were born, my wife was working. And we put away a lot of money that we eventually turned into a college fund for our kids. We have roughly 45 grand set aside, which I don't think is enough, and we keep adding to it as we can. Anyways, a couple of days ago go by and things seem to have calmed down, but my sister-in-law then asked my wife if she could essentially sleep with me in order to get pregnant. My wife was vehemently opposed to this at first, but after her sister explained that she wasn't attracted to me and that there would be no passion, it was just a means to an end. My wife thought that it might be a good idea. To be clear, my sister-in-law's husband is okay with his plan. My wife asked me, to go ahead with it but I refused. I told her that they can adopt a kid out of foster care if they want another kid that bad. Now my sister-in-law is mad at me along with my wife as she believes that this would just be a good way to help them have another child. I am standing by my decision and I have been sleeping in the spare bedroom since my heart no but I am starting to doubt and thinking that maybe I was unreasonable. So am I the jerk here for refusing to impregnate and sleep with my sister-in-law? I'm not going to read all the edits, but I will read 1, 2, and 5. Edit 1. The money is in a joint account that requires two signatures for a withdrawal, so my wife cannot take the money. Edit 2. My sister-in-law doesn't want to sleep with some random guy, as in her mind, and her husband's mind, that would be cheating. But it's not cheating if it's me, since I'm quote unquote unattractive. I'm at work and I will edit when possible, but cannot possibly respond to every comment. I appreciate all the support as I strongly felt that I was in the right. I won't feel guilty anymore, even if I was just feeling a little guilty. Edit 5. My wife has always been manipulated by her sister. Their parents were much older when my wife and my sister-in-law were born, and my sister-in-law was supposedly always good at getting her way. When their parents died, I think that my sister-in-law was even more domineering. We moved to a town over just for some space, but it hasn't helped much. I was an only child, so I don't quite understand the dynamic. I grew up pretty sheltered, but I had a good childhood and went to a good college where I was able to earn a master's degree. All right, folks, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think Opie's being the jerk here. It's totally reasonable to want to have control over his own reproductive future. And in fact, I would strongly advise that he not do this yeah. because if sister-in-law were to be like, hey, I want child support, there's no formal agreement. Like they're not going through a clinic. She could sue him for child support. Yeah, but that's there's a lot of stuff that's wrong here. This is the advantage of working through a clinic is that this is all above board. There's legal work, there's paperwork, there's a paper trail. Whereas in the particular case that they're suggesting, this could go badly for you very quickly and you could end up owing child support like what uh, Amber is saying because 
she it's just your word against hers, right? And this is not a good situation. And the fact that your wife is volunteering you for all of this? Yeah, well, I'm really disturbed by the fact that the wife is trying to do things without his consent, just volunteering his body. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one thing to say, I'll talk to my partner. Yeah. And then say, hey, my sister and her husband were thinking this. How do you feel about it? But you have to accept the no. Yeah. And just the way she's acting here is really gross. And it's the sister is just so manipulative, but the wife is also in the wrong for not standing up and like recognizing her husband has a right to bodily autonomy. Yeah, I really do not like the wife or sister in this particular case. I don't think either of them are acting very good. I think the sister-in-law is acting worse, but OP needs to ask himself if they really want to be in a relationship with a person who is going to treat them as if they have no say in these kinds of matters. Yeah, and is willing to steamroll over them to satisfy their sister. Like, I think OP's wife needs to go into therapy to work through her issues with her sister because mm -hmm. it's not healthy for your sister to have this much control over you. Yeah. I think most people would be like, yeah, this is a terrible idea. So the fact that she just, like, rolls over and is like, yeah, no, totally fine. Sleep with my husband. It's it's great. Yeah, and not to mention, like, there's going to be probably some feelings there. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're suggesting doing it this way of all ways, when there are other legitimate ways of going about this, very strange to me. I do not like this, and I have very bad vibes about all of these suggestions here. Yeah, well, especially don't like that sister-in-law seems to know everything about their financial health. Might try getting that money for her kids. Yeah, and I mean, suppose she doesn't go for the child support route, but she will probably still harass them for money, right? Because they'll be like, well, you, these children are biologically related to you, so you yeah. have an obligation to help support them. This is your way. child, OP. You can't let your child not have everything. Yeah. So to me, this seems more like a money grab than anything, and it kind of makes me feel ick. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And the Bloody Eleven says, this can't be real. I would divorce my wife if she ever agreed to that on principle. And Naive Slur 58 says, I would jump straight to divorce. And Bon Boni says, wanna bet if this is real that they would make you pay child support at the end. Not the jerk. If they're okay with sister-in-law sleeping around, then she can just go and get pregnant somewhere else. And Add Dangerous 1234 says, That's a point that I had thought of. You're right. This could be a scam to increase their income. And that's kind of what I'm concerned about. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, and our last letter is titled, I'm a 38 year old female and I took off to a hotel with my one year old baby. After another argument with my husband of four years, a male 38, we have been renovating his house, yes, his, not ours, for years and it's been getting to me. I have been pregnant multiple times in those years and I'm currently pregnant again. The years and years of building, it's ruining my marriage. We have been to counseling and agreed to make a plan to have it all finished before the baby comes. Making a plan was terrible and getting him to sit down and take this serious meant that I had to nag and nag and nag for weeks. And with everything that I wanted to plan, his response was, nah, it doesn't matter that we don't have, for example, carpets on our floors. We now live on concrete. Asking friends or family for help doesn't work, he doesn't want help, and he also does not want to have work done by a contractor. Finally, last week we made a plan, and we're going to start today with finishing everything. That did not go well. Firstly, he decided this morning to have lunch with friends. Then he basically just dismissed everything that we were going to do. For example, cleaning, sanding down, using masking tape, and covering the floors and furnitures before starting to paint the walls. In the end, I did it myself. I climbed up that ladder even though I'm pregnant and very dizzy and nauseous. When I got mad, he laughed at me. He always does that. He laughs when I'm upset. Just completely dismisses and invalidates my feelings. So just this afternoon, I was done. Absolutely done. I went upstairs, I took a shower, I booked a nice hotel, and I'm here with our eldest while pregnant. I am done with being put in the position of nagging wife. I am done with living on cold concrete floors. I am done being laughed at. I honestly do not know how to solve this. Anyone have any tips? All right, folks, what do you think? What kind of tips do we have for OP? 
Um, I mean, first of all, I want to validate that everything OP is feeling is legitimate. I understand her frustrations here with the situation. And I think getting away from it is a very wise move um, to, so you, that she can hopefully have some time to think and reflect. I think she's starting to see a pattern of behavior from her husband and identifying that pattern is a good first step. Yeah. This sounds like there's some element of control in here, and if OP feels like that's the case, it might be helpful to speak to a domestic violence resource center to help her out. I also would recommend talking to a counselor. You know, I'm going to come at this from a very unique perspective, as this sounds a lot like my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, OP, that your children will be extraordinarily grateful to you if you do not have them living in a house that's half finished for their, their whole childhood. I'll say that much. And also, they're probably going to be put to work eventually in this house to do stuff and spend their free time helping to build and or do whatever needs to be done to complete this house. The way he's laughing at you, the way he's demeaning you, the way he's mistreating you, dismissing your concerns, outright not following through with things he agreed to do tells me that he is only interested in doing what he wants to do. I don't think that this is necessarily a great environment for the kids to be in. No, I agree completely. And I, I would recommend a domestic violence resource center because they can help OP figure out the best steps for dissolving this union. Because he does sound very, like the way he laughs at her, there's some hallmark abuse in this. The way, just the whole way he treats her yeah. as is just not very good. So yeah, I agree completely. This this is not a good environment to raise children in. And it's also not a good environment for OP to be in where she's being treated like her feelings don't matter. Yeah, well, and then also... What happens if his behavior spills into like how the kids are too? So for instance, if his idea is that he can't ever get external help, right? Then these kids are also going to kind of learn that behavior a little bit as well. And not to mention, what happens if they have some kind of learning disability or something to that effect and he doesn't want to get external help from that as well? While well, we can handle this, we don't need extra help. I honestly, and I mean, maybe that sounds far-fetched, but I don't know if it is. I honestly <laughs> do not think that that's as far-fetched as it might sound. I think that those kinds of behaviors bleed into uh, those exact same kind of attitudes. So I honestly think that for the health and welfare of the children, that OP probably should find a new place to live. And I mean, it's hard because it's easy for me to be like, oh, you should just leave. Because, I mean, I'm not in that relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And But it's much sometimes much more difficult to actually execute on that than it is just to say, leave, right? So I feel bad. I feel bad that OP's in this position. But honestly, I think that this is a nice breaking point, right? Yeah, well, and if she has family or friends who support her, it might be a good time to lean on them as well and see if they can help her find a place to stay mm -hmm. or figure out next steps. Mm -hmm. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And shut your face, Grandma. Why? Why? <laughs> Is that necessary? It says, when I was 10, I woke up to my dad tearing down the walls. He never redid them. We lived in a house without insulation for the rest of our childhood until my mom left him. He didn't care about us. He never paid the heat bills. The bathroom was almost non-functional. We bathed out of a bucket. We had only a wood stove and an oven to keep us warm, along with winter coats. He kept the space heater running only in his room. My mother waited too much to leave, but told me after that it was the easier than she expected. Even if you don't have to care for yourself, you should at least put some into your children and decide what's best for them. Your husband is selfish and he actively laughs at your discomfort and make this your last pregnancy because he is not changing. And OP replies, my father was actually the same. I am very independent, thankfully, so I do have options. It's just sad when you find your partner is like your dad as if you learned nothing. He is, however, a great dad. Our kid's room is perfect, and he does everything for our kids. For all his faults, I do have to give him credit for that. He wouldn't do this to his kids, what our father did. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here, and Amber, she has a joke. Yes, yeah, so I've got a nice one for this rainy day. Oh, a rainy day joke. 
What kind of raincoat does Frankenstein wear on a rainy day? Well, what I want to actually ask first, I'm going to counter your question with a question. Why does this book feature so many Frankenstein jokes? There's only so many monsters that are, you know, kind of common monsters to write about, I'm assuming. I, I see. So why does Frankenstein wear a rain jacket? Is what it, kind oh, of raincoat? What kind of raincoat does Frankenstein wear? Mm -hmm. I can tell you exactly what kind of raincoat that Frankenstein wears because I, unlike Jovial Bob Sign, actually hang out with Frankenstein. We play cards together. So the kind of coat that he wears when he comes over for cards is a cheater's coat because Frankenstein, you're a cheater and I know that you're cheating at cards. Brian's a sore loser, apparently. Uh, a wet one. A wet one? Yes. And I have licorice spice. Alright, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy, spectacular, special Sunday. I hope it's as special for you as it is for me. And you know what makes it special, Amber? What? Our viewers. They're such special people. They are. And you. Oh, thank you. You are too. <laughs> Amber... We need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please, have it in the form of a questionable TV show title. What not to do when the babysitter's around. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye! Amber's like, why are you so mean, Brian? Why wouldn't I be mean? I Every single day, I have to talk about how I'm doing terrible things to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Under duress, mind you, duress.